All right, it looks pretty close to 6.15 by that clock. I think we'll um, start. And um, first, by confirming that we've posted the agenda in three public places and on the website and emailed interested parties. Yes. So we can move forward on this. And um, we're going to start with the minutes from the March 4th meeting, which is the 14th. 14th. March 14th, all right, getting warmed up here. <laughs> and um, I didn't see any corrections on those. So I did not either. I'd move to approve those. Mm -hmm. as Second. Presented. All in favor? All right. Aye. All right. And then we also have the minutes for the March 21st pre-town meeting, which looked correct to me. So um, I would move to approve those. I second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Got those, all righty. <clears throat> and, um, we have um, a bunch of guests here, and um, I'm thinking that um, Norm and Dean are probably here to talk about item number one on the agenda, which is the skate space discussion. Are you in, in with that too, Susie? No. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I, I, I just made Deacon protocol, but I just got a phone call saying I have to be in Randolph by 7 20 to pick something up. So I don't know what number I am on the agenda. Where are you? The bottom. She's fourth or fifth up from the bottom. Right number 14. Number um, 14, no, that's capital planning. <laughs> number 15, the, you're not talking about um, dog poop stations and <laughs> moving dog ordinance sign. The most important thing of the evening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <it's laughs> um, so if you have to, if you have to run, I don't see if everyone's in agreement. Yeah, we could perfectly fine with us. Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, yeah. Susie's on our rec committee, and we discussed it at length yeah. at our last meeting. Yeah. So. All right. Well, let's have at it. Okay. Um, I have um just um. Doggy bag, <laughs> just in case anyone has to go. <laughs> <laughs> got two. Here, I, I do. <laughs> I got hundreds of them in my car. <laughs> uh, I will share one um, brief. Um, I think it would make a good cartoon in the New Yorker. Is I was walking the dog and he had to go and I didn't have my bags and so what did I do? I I took off my mask and I used that to grab the dog. Right? It was like so handy. I didn't Great. put it back as long on. As you didn't put it back <laughs> on. All right. So anyway, you go ahead. Turn it Susie. inside out. Yeah. Now that I have your attention. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There is. I discovered that there is a town ordinance. I don't know. I was not aware of it, um, but it does say that there is a fine for not only having the dog off leash, but also for not picking up after your your pet. Um, there's one sign down below. I don't know if that, that building has a, name, a nickname yet, but down below um, on the way to the river. You go left to go to tennis courts, there is a sign that says there's a fine. It's well worn and not very visible. It's quite far off the road and leaning back. So, three questions I know that you're going to want to ask me what's it going to cost? Who's going to pay for it? And who's going to be responsible for maintenance and pickup costs? The answer to all three is I don't know, but we will by the time I'm done. <laughs> okay, so there are obvious reasons for having well, what I'm talking about. Is they're called pooper scooper stations. Um, and now every time I open up YouTube or Google or anything else, I get <laughs> ads for pooper scooper stations. <laughs> what it is is a small metal structure on a, on a metal pole. It's inserted in the ground. There's a, me a metal recept receptacle with a liner where people put their individual bags. Above that is a dispenser that holds up 2,000 bags. And then above that is a sign asking people to uh, follow the law, pick up after their dogs, with an option to post whether or not there's going to be a financial fine. Um, I've done extensive research. You can buy bundles of them, which is, as always, most price cost effective. But I think it is important those who haven't spent a lot of time thinking about this subject. Um, 
Oh, and, and it's important. One of the things that spring brings to my mind is not warm weather, but hearing the birds and seeing the poop. Um, it's already begun. I have a perfect, perfect view from my front porch right here outside. And almost every tourist that comes into town with a dog, after they eat in their shop, they walk over to the river here and they walk their dog. It'd be a great place for a pooper scooper station. Um, this is a huge issue because dog, dog feces is considered to be a pollutant. Uh, and they go extreme. Um, you know, they, they categorize it, you know, with oil spills. Obviously, we don't have enough dogs for that. There are approximately 150 dog registered dogs in town. And as I was saying, when the tourists come in, there's a, there's a lot more, and it's most of what we see, I think, during the summer. And all of the walking areas are along water. The new park, the Peabody Trail, and here. Okay. Uh, so we have those those possibilities. They carry all sorts of diseases. Uh, uh, bacteria can stay in the soil for years. Other dogs can transmit the disease to other dogs because dogs like eating each other's droppings. So there, there are serious health concerns that I think are the responsibility of not just the dog owners, but the people of the town and the government of the town. It's not going to cost that much. Um, and just someone asked me about using a fertilizer. It's not a good idea. Really high in nitrogen, and it could also carry bacteria. Um, and the rest of it is just common sense. It's courtesy, and I think the ordinance needs to be clarified because I didn't understand in reading it that um, the fine also applied to just not looking up after a pet. So I've identified five places where I think these would be useful. Out here by the side of the town clerk, one of the, uh, the, the Ridgeside Park, one or two on the park here in town, and one or two, uh, but maybe one by uh, skate space and one by the tennis courts. Uh, they can come in bundle supply, but you can't get six. So back to the first three questions that I couldn't answer. It's not going to cost more than $2,000. It costs as little as $1,600. That's for five stations, 20,000 bags, 100, 250 liners, all the hardware you need to put it in. One other thing I was thinking about is in terms of placement, it would be ideal if it was under a street light. That's not going to always be possible. They do sell them with little solar lights on them, but I don't think where we live that's going to work. So we can figure that out after this. So I'd like input. I, I don't. I can't see why anybody would be uh, would object to our town having this. Another reason is uh, speaking with Julie, both the state and the town of Rochester, we advertise as a destination town. This is a place to come. This is a place for tourists to come, and having amenities for their dogs makes their lives easier. So that would also be put in all of the uh, literature about the town, um, websites about the biking trails, bring your dog, just pick up afterwards, easy, accessible, but receptacles, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. 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 Possible sources of income, donations, uh, fines, um, I don't know what, how that would be handled. Fundraisers. I remember back in the 80s, uh, it wasn't, I don't know what it was connected with, but there was a dog show on the park. And all the kids got certificates. You know, if there's 150 registered dogs in town, most of those are probably from young families. It's a really good way to draw in community members that we don't normally see in town. It's, been, it's next to the recreation field, it's next to the tennis courts, it's right next to the river. Um, so I, I think it's a win, 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 win situation. Uh, and does anybody have any questions? So I'm basically presenting, oh, sorry, I'm presenting this as an informational piece. I figured it on, thanks to Doom, who approached my son about picking up droppings by the river. 
and uh, Trevor, my son, took a 30 gallon bag and shovel over. And while he was there, the two other regular dog walkers came over and they saw him and they felt bad and they helped him. And now when I see any of the three of them walk by, they always have a bag. So thank you. <laughs> they got me thinking about yeah. pooper scoopers. <laughs> so okay. yeah. Um, you're emphasizing this area here as probably uh, your your biggest concern, obviously, because you live nearby. That's what I see. Yeah. Are you? Uh, but you're proposing that they go into six different, five or six different locations. Um, do you know if those locations are uh, being abused? No, I mean the P Line Trail is just very healthfully used. Um, but I have never walked it without seeing you know dog feces on the ground. Um, fortunately, I've been one of the lucky ones who hasn't stepped in. Um, uh, there are people that park their cars right by the CB oil tanks and they let their dogs run out there and do their business. They don't even get all the way, they don't even bother going all the way in to the tennis court parking lot. Um, do you agree? I, I think having one down by the tennis court parking lot makes a lot of sense. And I could see, I because I have a dog and I walk all around town. And yeah, I, I, yeah this is definitely a popular spot here in town. And um, might as well have one on the main park and small park. Nancy? Well, I would have a question as to who's going to care for it. Who's, who's going to empty, empty them, them, right. And where does it get emptied to? What the, my my that was going to be my question. <laughs> waiting for the you know, results of, of this of this presentation here, but my intent um, is to speak with the people at April. <clears throat> Their trucks are in town a lot. Um, it seems obvious that the one right here could be picked up on Saturdays without much difficulty. But it depends because it depends. I can't ask for any estimates on that cost until I know how many and where they're going to be. I don't want to, I don't want to just speculate with them. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if I'd, I'd go as far as asking Abel to, um, to manage that, manage those stations, but I'm sure that they would, you know. Well, they wouldn't be managing them. It would just be another pickup site. Well, five stations. I don't think, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's Gosh. where, yeah, that's. Um, I'd sooner have the the lawn care maintenance guy. Do yeah, I think this would probably be like a monthly thing to check on. I don't think it's Is it like possible it could get picked up uh, by composting? It's no. No, it's not, it's not, it's not a composting. Composting. Potential for salmon. Yeah. We've had a dark station at Great Hawk for. Two years now, it's been pretty successful. It was, uh, I think it was uh, about 150 bucks or 200 dollars for the station. Uh, put two bags of cement in there, knowing Schmoke can do it. So you got the, you got a firm standing. <clears throat> um, we ended up getting um, just some local garbage guy, uh, a guy named O'Connell. Um, he doesn't do it anymore. Um, we got to find a new guy, but he charged us like three bucks per week to do it. Um, and I know that the town, the volume of the town won't be as little as um, what the uh, volume here would be, but that could give you an idea. You know, maybe just a weekly pickup is, is all you need. Um, you know, I don't know what other caveats you want. I, I would think it'd be more practical just to have um someone take them up and then toss them in the dumpster by the town garage or something don't need to have a special pickup for, no, for the dog stations you know I mean, it's a, and you're suggesting I, that uh, the person who talk, the town hires for uh, browns maintenance could do that I'm not true? suggesting no, it. The I, person I, I, I with a dog carries someone. Water. Someone with a dog should do that. Not right. It. They should deliver <laughs> their package. <Yeah. laughs> so are you volunteering? Here? No, that's a not it. Not. <laughs> 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 <Fair enough. laughs> but I, I, I like the idea though. I think it's a good idea. It's just a matter of finding someone to yeah. pick it up from that point. I think that's the issue. 
Now, in, in regards to initial funds, are there any funds that the um, utilize that the town has? Well, this, to um, this? It, it, it seems to me that this could be justified under ARPA funds if we're talking about making it safer and, and encouraging people to be outside. That was a lot of what the ARPA right. originally was about is to, to um, facilitate um, healthy outdoor activities, right? I mean, it's a small bite out of that. We yeah. don't have, we don't currently, unless we, we'd have to just, you know, steal it. There's nothing in the budget for it now and there's nothing in it for, for next year, but that's, um, seems to me that would be a likely um, source. Right, I put it on knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if not, I, 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 I have no qualms about being able to raise a couple of thousand bucks. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe that's a, a better approach if you try to raise whatever you can. And if you can't get to that point, then you come back to us and see what, you know, what you need after that. And in the meantime, I think we could probably approach John about when he mows the lawn every other week or something to pick that up yeah. and dump in the dumpster. I mean, he's going to be on every every spot, every anyway. spot yeah. anyway. So yeah. um, we could add that to his contract possibly. And, uh, you know, it's not any big deal. Yeah. He's going to be going right by the place anyway. Right. Doesn't, he would he also doesn't do it in the winter though. Source of problem areas versus other areas that are not yeah, right i'm like, sure he doesn't I, like cleaning the dog crap off his tractor right i mean that. is it a problem on the park uh, oh yes i, I can attest to on july 4th being on the stage at the park singing with uh, whoever shows up and in between songs you know somebody turning to me and going did you just see that <laughs> that lady with the big dog <laughs> anybody got a bag <laughs> it happens yeah. yeah, I might recommend maybe a, um, a signage in in on the park. There is a sign on the park to direct them to the dog dog stations. Right, but there is a there is one of the signs on the park. Okay, and that it, it, it's right it, in front of Huntington House. Does it direct them? It doesn't direct them no, to it a station. Suggests that they pick it up after themselves. Right. Right. But if there was a station, it might be, you know. That would be a good place for the station right by the sign. It would be a good place for the station <laughs> where the sign is tell them where, yeah. where they are. Well, this is one of the challenging parts of yeah. thinking this through because depending on how you access the park, mm -hmm. you access it. <laughs> you want to have the Huntington House and want to take it under advisement space space more space more yeah. Space yeah. Space. yeah. And then we can so go out. So that's one thing I would like yep. we can look at put on its placement. <laughs> No, I think it's a, it's definitely um, it's a good idea, and it would be um, enhanced. Everything. So we'll um, yeah, that's um, I don't think we're gonna make a um, specific decision now, but I think it's on the on the agenda, and I mean it's it's on our minds, and it's not the first time it's come up. So thanks for refreshing it, Susie, and I think that. So, so I'll put out. I'll put out a fund, fundraising article or communicate. Yeah. And I'll let you know how we do. Yep. That'd be Good. great. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Have a safe drive. <laughs> All right. Um, so, what do you think about having one of these stations by the skate space? Is that. Um, uh, for humans. Right, for humans. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a good idea. <laughs> Basically, it's you know I see it on my property right here in the yep. corner. Yep. Yep. You know, there's a fire hydrant there. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now those are for peeing on usually. <laughs> so, well, I do it all. Yeah. So um yeah, but um so skate space. So yeah. Um. So I sent an email to the selectman. And did did you all get to read it? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um. I have a couple of copies here. I'll just pass one. I know you've got one. I got one. Um, but you can pass, just peruse it. Um, but basically, um, the um, skate space has uh, 
I need some work, I need some uh, We've been struggling for the last couple of years filling it in the winter um, because of the out of level situation that it is. And um, so I took it upon myself to basically get a quote for resurfacing the skate space and or possibly redoing it in, in a more in a level way. Um, I just got off the phone with Ray before I got here. Um, and the quote I came up with on that was, you know, the total dig and redoing everything mm -hmm. kind of concurred with, with that, that prep work. Um, but what I'm, what I'm here in front of the select board for is basically, you know, looking for funding uh, for this project. Um, state space gets about 2,800 a year. Um, 18, 18 of the fact goes to um, John to clear the rink. Um, he has um, magnanimously offered half of that to redo the service for this year. Um, he couldn't do it this year this year because that, that would be like for next next winter. So he's basically cutting his fee for one year to clear the surface if we go ahead and redo um, the uh, right that that's that would just be a, a, a part of what it would cost, not right. Not gonna, I'm trying not to gonna cob, cover it. As, yeah. as you, if you read through the letter, uh, I'm trying to cob a lot of different um, funding to it together because it's a big number. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so to rebuild it completely, which is probably the, the best solution, because otherwise yes. it's just patching it again. They were well, talking forty or fifty thousand dollars, right? Uh, I'm gonna say thirty-five to forty. Thirty-five to forty. So the quote I got, the one quote I got for from a um, contractor, a paving contractor, Charlie Bowen came by over from Pittsburgh. Um, he said it would cost fourteen to sixteen to resurface the space as it is, which basically puts another coat over it, makes it smooth fairly watertight, but we're losing two to three inches of space that we can fill with water. And so, is it what, about four inches out of level from one end to the other? It is four inches out of level, at so, least. So yeah. it's, it's not a... Now I, have, I shot it in the fall. I've got the numbers right here. Yeah. Um, and you know we're, we're just basically fighting it every year. Um, the liner was a solution for one year. This particular winter was a nightmare. Um, we did a lot of effort to put boards up. The fire department helped us put it out, patch it. And when I got back the next day, the ground hadn't quite frozen, although it was like, you know, 10 degrees that night when we poured. <laughs> So it drained out and was back to square one, you know. So we only had four inches of water on one eye and one inch on the other. So anyway, it was just a very, you know, I kind of after this season, <clears throat> I said to Norm, I'm just not banging my head against this wall anymore, unless the town wants to invest in trying to make it inviting and um, something that we could be proud of. Um, it's, it's just, a, it's kind of, you know, it's not ideal right now and it gets a lot of use. Um, so I'm basically asking the first question I have is, um, can we, uh, as skate space, part of the rec committee ask for a reserve fund for skate space, um, for, a, a larger capital investment down the road. Um, what that means to me is that if we don't spend it, it rolls into the next year and increases like a uh, fire truck or I guess the tennis courts does the tennis it. Tennis court does it, yeah. Right, so I'm, I'm asking that question first. Um, 
um, because the nature of skate space that that asphalt area is is a sort of a thing that needs to be maintained over the course of years, and there needs to be some kitty to mm -hmm. alleviate <coughs> the right. We have maintenance fees. We have a thousand dollars a year, and and mm -hmm. mainly what goes on down there is volunteer effort. Mm -hmm. It's nobody gets paid to do anything down there, but um, it's every improvement that we've done is, uh, you know, I've been involved in, and it's been, you know, it's nice to have, but I just can't feel good about going down there to to make an ice skating ring. Uh, it doesn't when it doesn't work, right? Right. So. Um, is there so setting up a reserve fund this this would be working towards a solution for this many years in the future yes. at this at this at this stage of the game yes. unless you could come up with um, um, someone who was willing to sponsor it and, and I would think that finding a big chunk of money to address the main because well I know Terry gets frustrated from the fire department trying to Fill it and then have it just drain right out again. Exactly. It's it's kind of water. It's well, kind it costs of, us a lot of money to keep that untold structure and refill water. It's got to from forty something degrees up the the heating know, heating 50. in the fire station. Right when you pull a, a truck full of cold water into there, mm -hmm. yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Right, so there's a there's yeah. a cost. You yeah. Know, um, I mean, I I did stuff with the, you know, where not due to dig into the budget um scenario for 20 23 24 23 24 until this fall i mean that's um i would i would um well i would start looking around for um well that, that's someone. i'm i'm not finished yet but I'm, that okay. was just the first question oh so, that's the first question know, like the All first right. question is you know can we have a, a reserve fund Attach the skate space for future maintenance. If, it, if in fact we do fix it, mm -hmm. so um, the second is: is there a chance to increase the budget allowance for for us? Again, that would be um, right consideration future because we're we've already set the budget for starting july 1st so right. it's not really a consideration to increase the budget for it next year so the discussion of when does that begin to, next fall in the fall in the winter okay. well i'm going to just put a yeah a note in there that i mm -hmm. would like it discussed mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah i'll be back in the fall uh, the fourth idea is to um, what is the procedure for uh, getting some ARPA funds to dedicate to skate space initially um, for possibly this year. I've, I've listed in that um, that um, email I wrote um, the I think ten different um, funding sources that we have come up with. And there's more, but you know, it, those are the ones that I, mm -hmm. you know, that they range from the supervisory union uh, to the, go down to yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, supervisory union, uh, Rochester Elementary School, or the town of Rochester, um, trustees of public funds, uh, One Planet, uh, they actually um, use it, uh, the ARP, our um, ARP. Um, Public fundraising letter. We've been thinking about sending you know, a letter out to uh, everybody, you know, possibly in the town. Um, uh, you know, see if we can get individual donations. <clears throat> uh, we can also do that through a GoFundMe page. Um, and uh, we're thinking about maybe doing something for the Ridgeline Collective and the uh, Vermont Community Foundation. So that's the avenues we're looking at. So the, the main question is, um, um, what's the procedure for the ARPA funds? Well, the procedure in which we've, this is a good time to bring it up because we've been gathering, you know, a list of potential ways to do that. And the, um, 
and with an eye to having it be affecting the most people in town as possible, not just picking one pet project and, and funding that, but really to spread it out. Like the maybe the you know dog waste station. This is there's a, a small bite on it. This would be a pretty big bite on it. So we're compiling a list and we're we're intending to have more conversation about this with the town and to after and so this is good that you bring it up now that this would be another one to put on the list and, and throw it out there and get input from the town about how it um, you know, we'd like to see this this money spent. I it's not it's not a bottomless bit of money. Right, right. right. You know, I know the, the, the number. It right. would probably be more um, appropriate to have it be a um, a match. You know, if it, it, a chunk of it, I don't think that would look to do the whole rebuild out of ARPA funds. But right. if it could, you know, well, it, the thing that I feel is that um, I think the town should. Um, you know, I believe in the place because it has everything to do with outdoor education right. for youth, and I, I believed in that since I lived here. Um, and um, I think if the town were to put their money where the mouth is, it would go a long way uh, for us to go out and ask for private and public funds mm -hmm. on on our own. So if there was a significant number forward moving on this it would really go a long way by to saying well you know we, these ARPA funds are are hit are say ten thousand mm. dollars directed to it it would it would really help us in a letter to the public to basically try to get those um, those funds as yeah. as soon as we can I mean I'd love to do it this year yeah um, but I also know the wheels turn slowly and um, the, uh, the other question about ARPA funds, is there a timeline on any of that that needs to, um, if, if we were to get um, some money, is there like a timeline on it where it has to be spent on a certain day, date, date by? I think it's 25, 20, isn't it? 26, I think. 20, 25 or 26. Yeah, we've got, yeah, I think there's like, years. Yeah, we, yeah, we have yeah, a few yeah, years yeah, right, to, yeah. Okay. to yeah. So and, that's why we're compiling a list, really. And we don't, and we we're getting it in installments too. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I did talk to Larry Strauss. I understand that he's um, helping in, with that in the mix of that, and um, he he thought that it was a pretty solid place mm -hmm. to put some funds. Um, right. That was one thing, Dean, we are under a procurement policy with that too. So anything over ten thousand dollars, you'd have to get three different bids on. So, I mean, that's something that you'd have to do. And I think if you guys are willing to spearhead that, that would be a good way of dealing with it. What do you guys think? I have a couple questions too. Yeah. Who originally built the skate space? Well, there was. Um... The first thing we did was we put a liner down, a uh, rubber EPDM yeah, liner. I see that. But and then it then it was then it, you know that what didn't work out so well, the cattails, et cetera. And um was <laughs> yeah, 95, 96 mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. that. And then the in 99, I think um just talked to Ray about it, and he he seems to remember blacktop. Um, doing the work out of New Hampshire. Um, it's a paving company. Um, and he was saying like, you know, I had to go down there and flatten the thing out before, you know. So I don't think it was prepped quite appropriately because it's, it's obvious with what's going on with the, the heaving on the, on the north side. So are there plans that, I'm not saying we need to go out and find an engineer to develop plans, but are there plans that you can pull down off the shelf to um, avoid having the same situation come back again? The deeper you go and the more um, dream product you know all about that yeah. uh, that you can put in there uh the better off you are um ray seemed to think it was you know maybe 
uh, scrape down about three to four inches with gravel, and then you know so that's not that's not near enough. No, and no, I think there is more. drainage there, uh, as in a drain pipe to daylight, mm -hmm. and that actually still works, believe it or not, because it does not fill with water when those are open. But that would have to be redone. Um, no, I don't have a plan, but I've kind of been in construction long enough, and I would probably reach out to uh, Cricket maybe to get a, an idea of what it would the what the appropriate um, depth work would be. But Ray seemed to to concur that it, you know sixteen to sixteen inches to two feet would be more appropriate. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't want to uh, <laughs> rebuild it only to have it crumble again. Exactly. Okay, so yeah. if we're going to spend tens of thousands of dollars, yeah. I want it to go into something that will last a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, your reserve account, um, would those funds be targeted towards, would you still need to have a liner? No. No, no liners. liners. Okay, so that Ever. that would yeah. be eliminated. So. <laughs> <laughs> and so that would be for um, like sealing sealing the pavement uh, that would on be an for annual sealing basis, the pavement, which never really got done. Right. We so painted it several times. Right. But, like like what what Peter Parrish does every year on his right, that right. would be so needed to be done. There's a crack. Needs to be white though. Yeah, it, it needs does to be need white. to be white. Yeah. So I did do some research on that. There is a product that they can put in to the blacktop, some lime that lightens the color. Mm -hmm. It's not, it doesn't come out black. So it doesn't black. melt the ice. I would love it to be laid white, but I, there's nothing like that. It's, you know, it's, it's a petroleum product. Mm -hmm. So it's black. Mm -hmm. um, the white is pretty bright in the summer. Uh, right. <laughs> I know we may be like in between. Um, I know a lot of kids do it during uh, school hours and after school um, bike programs is a kind of staging area. Um, a lot of skateboarders are always there. Um, and the trip is more and more bumpy and cracked and not as safe in some places. Um, so I think the summer use, you know, alone would be a good reason to at some point resurface. Um, and the pump track that, you know, we help manage next to it. Um, back in green about it, just an idea of potentially could incorporate the pump track better into the skate phase um, in a way that, you know, the pump track is a paved asphalt for the skateboarders and rollerbladers, or scooters, bikes, and use on and off on uh, the skate phase. Uh, so maybe more of a design for, you know, primarily for winter ice skating, but you can incorporate the summer use um just an idea at this point but so do you want to chip in on the cost of redoing that <laughs> yeah we, we could we could discuss that yeah i think awesome. you better look into the curtain rain that bank is super wet well that's super wet. the around. problem we ran into with the tennis court that's why it's moving water you know, sitting in because of the water you, you don't have a good base yeah. It's wet in there anyway. That, I've dug that bank for the sewer lines, and that's super wet. It is wet in there. Yep. In fact, I have just a manhole just down the road there a little bit. I got two pipes that run down next to the road, if you've seen them. Mm -hmm. Run water year-round. And in the spring, they run, both of them run pretty near full pipe, four inch. That area is super wet, so without a curtain drain, you're probably wasting your time. About keeping it level. I yeah. guess it needs to be, um, you know, I, engineered. Yeah, it needs to be engineered. I think that um, it seems to me that it would be a, a waste of money to just resurface what's there and that it should be done yeah. properly. Um, so we're spending even more money. Which means spending yeah. more money. <laughs> yeah. The, um, well, another question we do have a athletic field over here is that at all possible to reestablish it over there it's a thought uh, you're talking about which field by the tennis well, courts by the, you know by the tennis courts um, you don't have lights there either no ele electric yeah, connection so we could, that doesn't really mean it couldn't go in no, but it's, it would be yeah. a hard one to put in. We've got we've got some time and money invested in that 
particular space. It's by the school, which is convenient for the school. Um, it has lights that are heated, get heated used that. in the winter. Yeah. Um, and the outbuildings, the outbuildings, everything would have to get moved. I think it's a bigger project, but I'm I'm willing to spearhead. You know, the I, I don't know what the engineering costs would be, but I you know um. It, it's it's definitely worth yeah um, going in that direction. Well, I it, think I think that it's um, increase the cost, you know. As yeah, well but it's it'd be a waste of money to not do it right. Right, yeah. Martha would like to add yeah. something. Um, Martha, yeah, just about the possibility of it being somewhere else. Um, when I gave the land to the town to establish that years ago, um, it was in memory of Katie Doherty, of course, and um, also I thought. And at the time it was brought up that that particular, like you mentioned just a minute ago, that that location was good because it was right next to the school. And since I live right above it, I look down and, and see from my office window every day, kids down there, lots of times after school, the after school program brings kids over. Right now, as I look down, there's four or five cars with a bunch of young men down there doing skateboarding tricks and stuff. And during the winter, when the ice was, uh, um, cooperating there were a lot of skaters down there too i'd see families down there and stuff so it does get a lot of use and the fact that it's right in town with parking there by the school and everything is, is to me makes it a good location i'm really um pleased that everybody wants seems to you know dean and norm and everybody are wanting to put some effort into keeping it going because i i just think it's it's another good thing about our town so i'll stop <laughs> All right. Well, let's um, move on from this now, but I, I think that it's a, a really good candidate for um, taking some of the ARPA money as a, as a starter and an incentive for, to, least, for people yeah, to at match. Least part you know, of it or all of it. Let's see what, what we're up against. Space. We got to do that. Yeah. But Maybe we, fund that we would endorse mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. doing it to the nines. Right. And, I, and so I'm going to research doing some kind of um, engineering mm -hmm. there. And um, the obvious- I mean, it, it's I'll, I'll not that complicated. I mean, there's water and, but we, it's- I, I would love yeah. an opinion, you know, off the cuff at this, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. first and say, get a quote on what, yeah. um, how, how we can make this done, done right. What? Uh, I don't want to do it unless it's- Yeah. I would think you, if you would get some sort of ballpark cost on the engineering part, mm -hmm. and we can start there and put that on the list for ARPA because it's going to be a costly thing. It's not going to be a huge amount, I wouldn't think, just to get an engineering yep. design there. And then we can figure out what the estimate of the cost is going to be right. after that. So if you want to spearhead that, I'd think that'd be the way yeah. to go. And we can throw that on into the ARPA. Yep mix okay i think don't you, do you yes, agree with that agree totally. yep. all right thank you um okay so um this should be a little bit quicker this particular particular one is we've got the application to approve the huntington house um liquor license and um uh, Got the check here with it, and I move to approve. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. See, that was nice and quick. Sometimes they go quick. Um, <laughs> we'll move along with yeah, the rest yeah. of it, too. <laughs> sure. Okay. So, um, next on the agenda we've got consideration and possible approval of form pm1 grant agreement resolution for the rochester high school repurposing study if this sounds familiar that's because we already did that but we didn't include some of the appropriate language that we we should have that um the um basically we have to pass a motion at a meeting and 
that where is they want basically that the agreement the, the sub grant agreement is a legal valid and binding instrument enforceable in accordance with its terms that's the sentence that i didn't say last time yeah, just to um cross the t's and dot the i's um, so i guess i move what i just said that we approve this <laughs> <laughs> yeah then We've already done it. Very good. I second that. With the proper uh, verbiage. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Martha, you got to unmute. I'm sorry. Can you just repeat the wording real, really quickly so I can get it? Okay. I didn't get it. Yes. Um, okay. We want to certify that this sub grant agreement is a legal, valid, and binding instrument enforceable in accordance with its terms. That's still um, a fair amount. Hey, the sub grant is what? I'm sorry. Excuse me. You can um, we can give you a copy of this afterwards. Um, so if it's easier, yeah. To maybe do if I call the if, if I call the office tomorrow, maybe Julie could give me a, email me a copy. That sure. would be um, that would be. Make okay, more thank sense. you. Sorry, to, sorry to interrupt. Thank you. I'll okay. mute myself again. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Okay, so we'll um, this is. Okay. All right, um, that was a little quicker. <laughs> and this is the um, consideration and possible approval of the VCDP subgrant and administrative services program, which is the management agreement for the Rochester High School repurposing study and that is basically authorizing and, and assigning to two rivers the role of managing this grant is by that right yes i yep. believe so yep. yeah i think that's it's itself the right thing i would um and yes. we have the proper verbiage for that word for word okay so i would move that um we approve the two rivers for the VCDC sub VCDP sub grant and administrative services program. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye, aye. Aye. Um, and then we have application for park use of the White River Valley players. Um, this is for an outdoor event, fresh air history, a theatrical tour around the Rochester Park. There'll be five stations, not poop stations, uh, around the park and the audience in small groups rotates among the stations to view short historical plays. And um, that's going to be May 20th. May 20th. I think it's two days. Pardon? I believe it's two days. Uh, 20th, yeah, Friday and Saturday, 20th and 21st. Yeah. Um, from. The, the performance is from 6.30 to 8 p.m. at 5 p.m. setup. And I'd move to approve, it sounds fun. Second that. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Right along. And then we have a, another application for the use of the park for um, Green Up Day, once again. And that's gonna be on the 7th of May from eight till four. And um, Nick Procuto is gonna be, um, making the application and, and coordinating that. And did I have a question, Robert? No, oh, no, no I thought I had to okay. So I um, move to approve that. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nice to have that back. Well, they did it last year, but in a little more of a um, uh, abbreviated fashion, I suppose. Now comes to um, the question of the 4th of July parade, where we, um, We've been putting this off to kind of see how the, um, the COVID situation was going to unfold. And I know Martha is anxious to, to get planning if we go ahead and do it. What, what, what's your thoughts? I say if Martha is anxious to go ahead with the parade and management, I, I'm all for it. Let's do it. Yep. My, yeah. my only concern... My only concern, in addition to COVID, is is the paving um, work. Um, 
I got the impression that it's possible that they could be here by the 4th of July in, in town. They probably won't be, they won't be working on the 4th of July, though, I doubt. No, but I mean, right. if, if yeah. Main Street is dug up, would that be, that might be a problem for the yeah. I bet they had 4th of July parades before <laughs> Route 100 was paved. Okay. No, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. Yeah. also, um, I'm going to be working, I'm going to be working to get some, a number of volunteers. I, I, I did a, most of this myself in, in, for the past 20 some odd years, but my uh, physical condition wasn't helped by my car accident a month ago. And so I, um, anyway, I'm willing to do it, but I'm, I'm working to get, um, volunteers so anybody who wants to volunteer feel free <laughs> but um i, I the want issue to put that in the paper put that in the paper yeah. i'm i'm planning on i'm planning on i'm um, seeing if i can get some volunteers because um okay. it is it's there's a long to-do list okay but anyway so should i just i get the impression i should just go ahead it's okay yeah yes okay yeah. thank you i think that's the same thing yeah Yep, we're going to go for the July parade. It's official now. Maybe he wants to take it. Yep. All right. And the next item on the agenda is a letter of support for the Ridgeline Outdoor Collective. And I'm going to hand this on to you since this in, concerns uh, recreational trails. And I have a recreational business. I'm not going to um, get involved with that one. give you a little more info on that um, yeah we applied for a first program um we did not get that um letter before you guys submitted it earlier um a couple months ago um so this is another camp at another uh state grant recreation trail program grant for existing trails um the same same thing basically you don't know, see keep trying <laughs> So we move to sign this letter of support for Ridgeline. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And was there a change in the letter that you handed to Julie, or was it the same thing? It's the same one. Oh, yeah, same. it's the Do same you, as what you I read before. You could take the copy with you. I just brought a copy of it. It's the same one. Yeah. Okay. So we sign. Yep. Both of us. Yep. Me and you. Excuse me, I couldn't see who was speaking in the back. I did, the gentleman who's speaking in the back, who was that? Angus. Angus, Angus McCusker. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Do um, you want to take a copy away with you now? Sure. Yeah, why don't you... Um, I'll sign that one too, and then you can take it take it off with them. Mm -hmm. So um, the next item on the agenda is to adopt the municipal policies and codes to form MP1, which is basically we need to adopt these policies to be in compliance with our um, submission for the grant for repurposing of the high school. And probably and probably other things ARPA too. too. Yeah, towards ARPA too. So it's um. It basically, it's um, consistent with the provisions of the Vermont Community Development Program and federal law. The town of Rochester has adopted the following policies and codes. We've got an equal employment opportunity policy, and that's modified on the state of Vermont state government EEO plan for fiscal year 2017. And we have a fair housing policy, which is also required. And we have, well, I'm not gonna go into reading all the details of it, but the, the bold ones, uh, use of excessive force policy. Don't wanna have that. We also have a policy on the use of BCDP funds for federal lobbying. That's the BIRD anti-lobbying amendment and new restrictions on lobbying submission for an application also represents the applicant's certification of the statements in 43 CFR part 18, appendix A. You guys know that one. Yeah. And then also a, we're adopting a code of ethics for administration of Vermont community development program and the Drug-Free Workplace Act of 1988 
and the sub recipient oversight monitoring policy. You can see why we overlooked some of these things in there. <laughs> yeah. And um, also there's the whistleblower protections. Mm -hmm. Want to have that for if someone's Sorry. dog is on the park. And, uh, <laughs> and then also a texting while driving Last but policy. Not least. <laughs> no texting, texting while, while no driving. texting while driving. Yeah. Right. Unless right. you're whistleblowing. That <laughs> <laughs> applies to okay. all talent. All right. So I'd move to approve. I second. Or, or actually this is to adopt. Adopt. Yes. Okay. And I second that. All in favor? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Most of those policies are laws as well. Right. So. No. Yes, yeah. I know it sounds a little yeah. funky, but yeah. okay. Um <clears throat> all right. So this one is probably um not so simple is a review of the town of Rochester's master financial policy and um the grant accounting policy. Which is included in the mass. I'm gonna, yeah. I think I can go ahead and just include it as one big, yeah, as one policy. big thing. Yeah. So, have you had a chance to look at this? I have not. not no, I it. think that this is something that we'll probably table yeah. until we can yeah. actually see what we're talking about. I just to, right. Yeah, it's get it a good on way then. to yep. also let others know that we're working on it. Yeah, yep. yeah. <clears throat> so, and uh, it does have to go under review with a couple other eyes right so mm -hmm. we should adopt it after that right yeah is there a yeah. time frame on this uh as soon as possible it's holding up okay. receiving federal grants all right no, so okay. we should get you know, after that mm -hmm. then. all right so yeah i don't think we should just go ahead and prove it without looking nope. at it nope. Nope. it's going to take okay. some time yeah all right so what should we put a table date on this for next meeting I can just keep it under old business until we're until yeah, we get well, to we're ready we to adopt. Get, but we need a target because we yeah if that's holding us up from getting that um, FEMA right. dispersion. We should attend to that. We should we should move. Jim to, Barlow has to look at it, correct? And uh, Nathan. Yeah. yeah, and Nathan too. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of yeah. missing pieces in that, right. right? So I can collect everything and just send it out to them tomorrow mm -hmm. for, and then you guys can. And yeah, that would be yeah, good if you get it to them. So we material. then yeah. we can. Yeah. Two policy, one Maybe. policy I'll have included. I can do that up, but two of them um, are with the trustees of the public funds and investment. Pol there's two investment policies that they want to have a meeting and they want to just review it before they submit it. So. <laughs> Does this have anything to do with our capital plan too? Is that it's part, part of that? Of, it's part, it's all it's part of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I did speak with Greg White about getting into the capital plan that's, at some point. There's okay. just it's on the agenda. Yeah. Oh, it is. I didn't even know it. <laughs> so I'll send you guys a rough draft. Tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Good. Thanks. Thanks. That good. <laughs> um, next item on. Um, I think Barb DeHart has oh, something to say right. along those lines. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, um, I uh, was scheduled a meeting with the trustees, or tentatively scheduled it for in May to go over those policies, <clears throat> just so you know, early May. Okay. The other question I had is on that financial plan, can you also send that out to some of us? Maybe the budget and finance might be interested in it. Yep. Mm -hmm. As well as myself being part of both. <laughs> yep. Yep, we'll get it to you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um talking about finding money, um, the delinquent dog licenses. How do I, this is a new one. I haven't seen this come across our desk in terms of um, um, how, so you've sent letters out to these folks. So in December, I sent out renewals for mm -hmm. everybody. Yep. Um, and a good majority of them have come back. There's a list there of I guess I just need to know the steps, um, what you'd like me to do. Shall I send out a reminder letter to those who haven't yeah. re-licensed I mean, them? And, I mean, Should I give them two letters and then send the dog? The dog catcher? Catcher after them, yeah. or what steps do you want me to take? Last year, I really struggled with, like I sent out seven letters to numerous people and they never once responded. Mm -hmm. And those people are still on the never license their dog ever list. So. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a struggle and we're trying to be a little more 
serious about it this year um, and take care of that because it's money that the town. What's the expense needs. of a certified letter? Two dollars or something about that. Yeah. Would that be something that we should do? Send them certified mm -hmm. so that you know they get it. Might pay a little more attention. Perhaps to we should so consider could... putting them on the delinquent taxpayer page in our town <laughs> report. Well, that's another consideration. Or you put them on the dog. You don't get a free bag if you're not licensed. Pooper scooper brigade. They have to empty the pooper scooper. Yeah, right. They don't, yeah, don't let register their dog. Okay, so okay. you just want me to send out like one nice friendly reminder yeah. this week. And then and be like, yeah, hey, that Jeff could be. Get the list. Okay. Is it? Is there a, a fine or anything involved here? We can ordinance. find them up to $500 if they don't so license their dogs. So why don't you send them a copy of that too? Okay, yeah. I've done that in the past. And and then when they get it, it in two, and what about, and then we have yeah. Jeff go at it? Yeah, mm -hmm. and then also, I mean, okay. there could be people, their dog might have died too, you don't know. Yeah. Right. You know, and so. I check, you know, if I see a 16-year-old dog hanging out that hasn't been licensed, I sort of just take them off the list yeah <laughs> but if you have a two-year-old and you're still living here yeah yeah okay all right um we could i suppose it wouldn't hurt to maybe make a couple phone calls to yep. you know, just to say hey all right okay thank you yeah puppies are six months right you got it okay <laughs> okay you got it <laughs> All right, so we've touched on this um, a, a few spots already, but um, starting the discussions about what to do with the ARPA, ARPA funding. And as I mentioned earlier, we're, our hope is to have it be spent in a ways that will affect the um, broader population as much as possible, not just to pick a project that we couldn't fund and then do it just to... Um, anyway, we have... Frank, do you want to? Um, Frank's been working on a list of some potential thoughts, and and we're um, we'd like to have a probably a, just a special town meeting at some time just to gather more input from from you all. Like the, bringing up skate space was a great great step, and, you know, um, and the dogs. Um, do you want to just sure? Rattle I'll, off some I'll run things through. Thought about? Um, we started out with the monies that we need to spend or we already have spent. We're just waiting for um, things to be right. There's an air compressor for the fire department, which was uh, $15,750 um, that we haven't paid for yet, but we are in the process of doing that as soon as that gets straightened out. Maintenance right? needs to be done on it, yeah. Yep. And plus, this owl um, was a, an addition that we put on there for Zoom meetings. There's also going to be uh, some money that we're going to owe on the office generator here because the bids were all higher than what the grant allowed us to spend. Um, and then we have some requests. Um, having the paving come through the summer, uh, we need to meet with the paver people from the state to figure out what they're going to do and what we need to do to try to fix up some of the sidewalk issues and for seamless areas around places like in front of the church and down in front of the old firehouse here and in the, the sidewalk in front of the credit union, places like that, we need to, in order in front of Park House and even in front of the library and those places. Um, we also have this town office wall that we've been beating around for four or five years, I guess now, um, and we can't seem to find funding for it. So that's something that I think we need to do and get done. And the town office here, has an underground fuel tank that's 50 years old, or I would say anyway, and I would like to see that taken care of. I've 
looked at some pricing for that. I talked to CV Oil about it. So there is a, a number we might be able to put together there. Also the EV charging station down here, they're really uh, wanting to do that this summer. Um, and that's gonna be located down in the parking lot on the right going north across from the fire station. And we will have some necessary things that we'll have to do as a town in order to see that through. Uh, there'll be some tree removal there. Um, I'd also like to encompass that with some of the tree removal we need to do on the park and also put the stump removal on the park on that too. Um, and there is another tree down by the firehouse, a big one that needs to go that's dead. And the fire department, when they get their new truck, if they don't have enough money to set their truck up, I think there's probably ARPA funds that we can use there. And the things that were mentioned today, the, the pooper stations and the uh, uh, skate space, possibly um, using that for at least the engineering costs to figure out where we can go from there. And other things, uh, there's always more paving to be done. The town office here, the cemetery hasn't been done in, in my lifetime. Uh, it would be nice to put some new blacktop on that first part up there. And the, there's a couple of cross drains on the Bethel Mountain Road that we haven't been able to acquire funding for. And I, I'm thinking that maybe that's a good use too. And, if anybody out there that um, has projects that are worthy of, you know, helping the town in that, in the long range forecast, um, they should bring them forward. I also have put the library on there for their outside walls that we need to really look at that as addressing some of that. And we may be able to use some of this ARPA money for those kinds of things. So I encourage anybody that if they have something that they should bring it forward and we can put it on the list and then we'll have to sort through the list to see what's important and what isn't as of. So that's about so, it. So Pat, you've been working on with Larry on the evolving requirements about what can and can't be used for ARPA money. And that's relaxed quite a bit, but is what's what's most the all of the things guide? that Frank mentioned would would be fine. Mm. They they lifted almost all the requirements yeah. of it. I mean, uh, you know, you can you can have a town picnic. Um, you can, you know, do a lot of different things that you can do, but we are looking to do infrastructure, uh, things that'll last for the town. Um, and uh, everything there would fit into mm -hmm. it. We can, you know, there's there's preserve the histor historical pres preservation is a category that's in there too. Mm -hmm. um, so if there was somebody that had something that they thought was historically significant to the town, um, we would be all ears for that. But this money's going to go fast. We're, we're not getting three million here. It's just three hundred thousand. So, um, at the way that prices are going, unfortunately, we were gifted the money, but we're going to be paying probably twenty to thirty percent more for every one of these projects because of the way the economy is right. going nowadays. So, um, but we have until twenty twenty six to spend the money. Um, maybe things will start, inflation will start coming down mm -hmm. and maybe procrastination might help us get more bang for our buck. But we're all ears at this point. And we're also going to be looking at trying to piggyback this money on to other grants that would help and coming in that way too. I'm not sure we're going to be able to do that, but I th we're going to try. In That's what the, the 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 government is saying that we should wait to see what other buckets of money can be coming towards us, so that we wouldn't be spending that money when we could have got funding from another source. So they they're actually promoting procrastination, hmm. but it is time to probably get some type of plan in place. Yeah. Is there a, a timeline that? is uh, tagged to spending like you you have a certain time like 2026 is when it but you can only spend 
X amount this year, next year, or the following year? I don't or think so. No. I don't think no, so. There's no like level of no of, of time. No, but there's That's another thing to saying. consider is that every 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 town in the United States is getting this. So the the, the going out the bids and finding contractors they're all going to be pretty busy if every town is looking for mm -hmm. paving. <laughs> yeah. So um, maybe sooner rather than later, we're, we're juggling that back and forth. The money can be spent, isn't it, by 2024, but the projects have to be completed by 2026. Right. Okay. And we don't have the full funds yet. Either. No, no. Yeah. We, we, we have, have a balance of 162.76 right now. And like I said, there's like 18,000 that's already spoken for. Mm -hmm. So in the rest of them, like, we don't know what the paving's going to be. I'd kind of like to, I'm at the thought that when they come through and pave the village, we kind of want to make that seamless as possible. So it at least, it enhances the, the downtown area right. and not have to wait a year or two to catch up on that. I'm trying to look at that. I do meet with the um, state on the 21st. Terry, if you could be there with me, he'll have questions for you as far as what you want to do with the all the shutoffs and every, yeah. all that. That would be good. I, I'll give Definitely you the... Remind me. Yep, I will. Um, so that is the 21st. <clears throat> uh, that's, that's a Thursday at noon that I have to meet with him. So... Um, just to give you guys a heads up, we can try to figure out what kind of money that's going to cost the community there. So. We get a second installment on that money in August. Yep, we get the small part in August and then the bigger part comes in September. What's the small part and the big part? Mm, Do you I know? I think that's, that's small the parts. county money, right? Yep, the small part's the county money, and I think that's like 50. I can't remember mm -hmm. this. Some reason thirty six thousand sticking in my head, but it might be fifty something. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. That's that's fine. And the other part comes. That's something we can get later. All right. So um. So yeah. Anyone? We're open to, you know, thoughts and suggestions from the townspeople about you know if there's something. Something else. I think that would be um, worth thinking about. Um, yep. Robert, can you post that list as it's on, on the website? On the website, I mean, even, even just the scan of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we probably can. Yeah, I don't see why not. Mm -hmm. I mean, we tr I've tried to think of things that would be beneficial for the taxpayer in the long term, is what I'm looking at, or what I looked at when I did yeah. this, but yeah. Um, I think that benefits us all and saves us money in the long run. Yeah. So, just again, responding. Um, I'll talk about more when we get into the proposal for a town grant application, but um, it might be worth putting in something, even if it's symbolic, as piggybacking a grant application. Frankly, just saying uh, some component of that, the hundred dollar amount, in particular, but. For the high school uh, project, if that if that's a go, mm -hmm. uh, then you know might be something there. That... We can certainly add it to the list, Vic. Um, I I would look at it more. I think only because of uh, the unsurety of what that is project could be or will be or what it may not be. Right. Um, I wouldn't put it on a on a priority, but. I think it should go on the list. Okay. Yeah. Um, you're going to talk more about that in, the, yeah. in a minute, yeah. what that yeah. would be leveraging. Um, <clears throat> the capital plan committee and planning. So we had um, we had developed a capital plan. Where's your theme? A while ago. <laughs> It's in the book. Yeah, it's right here. And um, it's still in that book. And, 2015. And, and it seems like the um, every time we go um, attacking the budget, that that book gets shoved farther and farther into the corners. So I think it's um, so there's a desire out there to to revisit that and and 
Update it. Update it's it. Part of the policy. It's one it's, of the policies. And it's too. one of the policies that we must have a capital plan updated. Yes. So who's on the committee to do that? I guess we are by right. default, right? We are by default. Mm -hmm. um, we, we would be working with the budget and finance committee so. as well. I, yeah. So there's a bunch of us on that. I had a conversation <laughs> with Greg White um, the other day about sitting down and mm -hmm. doing this, and he's all willing to yeah. get involved. So um, I don't mind spearheading that. Okay. You know, I, I'll sit down with anybody. Nancy, you want to get involved and too? Barb too? And Barb, mm -hmm. that would be fine. I, I don't have a problem with that. Good. Uh, so. All right. You're busy. Yeah, I'm retired too, so it's all right. <laughs> I mean, it gives me something to do some days. Some days I want to run and hide. Frank, you want me to scan that to you and Nancy and Barb, so you guys have it for review? Yeah, I've got a, I've got a copy right here anyway. Yeah, and I have looked, a copy too. Okay. And, and I've looked and through it already, already and made scan. some changes on it. I think a lot of it, they, they recommend a lot of things that we're not presently doing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, with interest rates rising like they are, we may have to look at doing some of those things. Um, I I don't, after reading it, I don't see how we could ever do what they want us to do. I mean, it's just the dollar figure would be astronomical for the yeah. community to support. And I, I just don't see that happening. So I think some major revision is gonna be necessary to uh, address that. One of the things I noticed looking at it too is um, a lot of the different plans have already come to like, you know, just the different culverts that were replaced and it kind of gives maybe right. the highway a priority list based on the, the you know, right. the and capital plans. And some of them years. we couldn't do at all because right. of, of uh, not being able to get right away. So right. there's three of them in there that were, mm -hmm. were <clears throat> Put on the priority list but we can't do them because we we can't get the right away so that's a issue that we'll just have to address if something happens i guess all right um thanks for taking that on frank no problem yeah. so speaking of taking things on we've got um the uh, um the appointments as a re um reorganizing after the um election so the, um, you want to, we want to do that and you want to get like wanna, Joan and, and Terry and the <laughs> library done I sure, mean, we'll jump do over the agenda a little bit because some of those sure. appointments are going to be take a little while. Days. I don't think we can do all of it right away, but, um, sure. Joan, you've been hanging out here. You want to, um, give us some updates. Yes, um, I'll run through just the stuff I've been working on since the last meeting. Um, standby generator is now, uh, that project is under contract and ready to go whenever everything is lined up. Um, uh, the VTRANS annual financial plan has been submitted um, and the application for the structures grant, uh, which would be for construction of a new culvert on Town Line Road, Cowbrook. Is going to be submitted this week to VTrans. And uh, in talking to Cricket, we both agreed that the best approach in terms of timing for that would be to wait to make sure we get the grant uh, this year rather than, you know, going out to bid on speculation. And then just mm -hmm. situation with inflation and um, contractors not always uh, looking to bid on projects because they're so busy already that we would put this out to bid in early 2023 um, and will you know, give us enough time to be able to do that in the next calendar year. Um, and I think we have a pretty good chance of getting this because they did already fund the design work for, for that culvert replacement. Um, the stormwater project at the town garage is ready to go. It's under contract with White River Partnership. It's gonna be, uh, contractor is Kingsbury Construction. It's based in Middlebury. And they have a start date. I don't have an exact date, but it's going to be sometime in July. And Cooter um, uh, was okay with that. We checked them before we, we locked that in. Um, 
Uh, big news, of course, is the FEMA reimbursement um, is really on a fast track now from the state. Uh, <clears throat> we are just looking at getting a uh, federal share. Uh, the state still has its 25% to put in, um, but we'll, we'll be getting $181,915 for the completed road projects. That's all the work that was done up through the end of December 20. 19. Um, and then we're getting 75% of 75% for the incomplete roads, which is all the work that was done in 2020 and 2021. Um, and we put in, uh, Dune, you signed that letter for a drawdown, which is in anticipation of the feds uh, approving it and sending the money to the state for disbursement. So that's another 88,574,000. Mm -hmm. Four dollars. So the total that we're looking to receive sometime in the near future uh, is two hundred and seventy thousand five. It off. Okay. Barb Dahart has something to say. You're on mute, Barb. Still. <laughs> Is that money also part of the money that's going to be held up before we get these other programs, policies in place? It may, because it's all coming through Sam. Excuse me? I feel like it's probably going to, yes. <clears throat> this is kind of a retroactive situation then, isn't it? Since that money was they... spent and approved quite a while ago, or just recently approved. Yeah, was... Right. So I mean, I, it's hard to say. Joan's on mute. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot I was on mute. Uh, I, I don't, I think we're okay there. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. I would hope. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> yep. Okay. Sorry, Joan, you cut out there for a minute. It sounded like, is that, is that what you had or do you have more? No, that's it. Okay. I have questions, a couple questions, Joan. Mm -hmm. um, I, I saw a, a press release from the Agency of Transportation seeking applications for bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure improvements. They've got $3.8 million for uh, bicycles and pedestrian sidewalks. Um, is that something that you laid eyes on or do you want me to forward this to you? Um, yeah, I've seen it. Thanks, Pat. Um, that's an annual okay, thing. Good. Comes out yes. every year. Uh, looks like they got a lot of funding this year. Um, it's, it's something that we definitely want to look into, but we're not, we need some work to do first. We need to do some preparation and know exactly what the scope is that we want to do. And I think we need some engineering work and some input, uh, well, especially from, from the select board, but Possibly well, we, we do have we do have the um, the engineering study that was done on the sidewalk. On the, for the yeah. sidewalk. No, I that's, know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that, which that needs didn't... some editing. It, it definitely is not the the take it to the the guy and say do this. But no, it. But the fact that we have it in hand and then that could be used to, um, um, you know, to modify and to, to work from might be, um, I don't know to what extent that would satisfy their requirements for um, the planning study. It just yeah. is um, a little um, insane, the extent to which money gets sucked up by studies. I'd hate to, to start <laughs> um, from scratch for, for a sidewalk study when we already, you know, have gone through that and and I think we could about five years ago. Yeah. More than yeah, five. It's, yeah, it's even yeah. longer than that. Yeah, it was a um, while ago. <laughs> anyway, it seems like they do have a lot of money right now and it and it um it it probably wouldn't it wouldn't hurt to could possibly make reallocate some, some ARPA money, but we, we want to look into it before we make that decision. So right. Yeah, yeah we we've got the study, that. but we, we need engineering done. Um because we still have those stormwater issues in lo some of those locations um, that need to be incorporated into whatever we do on the sidewalks. 
Do you have a, a meeting with Chris Bump scheduled? Uh, no, I don't. Are you talking about the annual meeting? Yes. Uh, no, uh, they usually contact us when they're ready to do it. They didn't do, didn't do it at all last year. And I haven't right. them this year. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. Okay. Keep us posted. Yeah. Well, I did talk with Chris Joan a couple days ago and, and he ran by what he thought he was going to do in the village. And, but he said it was going to be a ways out there. Um, he, he wasn't sure if they would meet the timeline that they've established and they weren't offering up anything. So the, the village construction that happens with the paving project is it could be delayed until in the, into August, but they weren't sure. He wasn't sure. He was hoping to be out of here before then, but we can meet with him at some point and talk when he's a little more firm on his schedule, I think. He's waiting to see how the covert replacements on 100 are going and he doesn't know quite how that's gonna work. So there, there'll be more information on that down the road. All right, is that, is that it, Joan? Yes. She's all set. She's all set. Yes. Okay. Tony, you're here. Um, any um, news from the library? Well, we have a trustees meeting tomorrow afternoon at 5.30 at the library. Uh, and Jeanette has a lot of programs going on in the next couple of months, actually longer than that. So, um, best way to find out about those is look at posters around town mm -hmm. and read the Herald. Uh, and Front like, Porch could Forum. could take me a long time. And Front well, Porch Forum. Front Porch Forum as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah. All right. Um, Terry, got any updates on the utility world? No, I just, we're trying to find the new, uh, Rubber seals up for up in the those and banks. Yeah, I'm still looking for those. Yeah, yeah, I've been on with. So yeah, new voice and king about you it. You flushed one hydrant or just one, or did you flush two? <laughs> <laughs> no, we only flushed one. We only flushed one. <laughs> but um, but it's um. You flushed it for a little while. Yeah. The um, but it was um probably need to exercise. Yeah, we, we yeah. Uh, yeah. it cools off some. You know, I did it one year too early. And the state <laughs> yeah. had to come out and salt the road. Salt the road, yeah, <laughs> no, not good. <laughs> so we'll probably right. decide we have a meeting tomorrow yeah. night. Yeah. Um, um, Jeff Gephardt, is he in, in the house? He's on Zoom. Yep. Unmuting. Yep, I'm here. Good evening, all. Um, just the a few things to report on uh, the 20th of April, a um, week from Wednesday, um, Megan Chambers with Efficiency Vermont is going to come down for a walkthrough of buildings, uh, of town buildings. Um, we've done walkthroughs with Energy Efficiency Investments Incorporated and others, but we have not been able to get Efficiency Vermont down here due to COVID issues so we've had it scheduled twice and should be able to go through with it. I'd be happy if uh, a member of the board would like to participate in that. We're planning on looking at the town clerk's office at 930, um, look at the school building, um, look at the library, um, and uh, also um, Jeanette will not be available that week. She is on vacation, so I'm hoping a library trustee would be available um, uh, for reviewing the building with efficiency. I'll, yeah, I'll do it. I've been, been involved with the other ones. I've yeah, seen these there, so. buildings quite a few times. Yeah, I've been through them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jeff, I'll go with you on that. Great, but, great. And you've yeah. got keys, so that, that makes it a lot easier. Well, I, I can locate keys. Right. Um, okay. The other thing, too, uh, you know, I've been on some state um, webinars about ARPA money, and there are some things that ARPA can do with respect to energy efficiency. Uh, of course, you're talking about capital needs, and uh, 
the energy efficiency investments incorporated uh, walk through and, and a rough assessment of our needs uh, I would offer for that list as well. I think we probably have to uh, spend money first to do engineering analysis, uh, you know, the, what, what work energy efficiency in court, um, Inc. Um, did is, is really a rough view of things. Um, so that's it. Just more to come. Maybe, uh, maybe efficiency Vermont will um, have because um, they're not they're not so much a for profit operation. They might have some some uh, insight into that how we could um, move forward without having to get. Too yeah, and the, and the town right. has the town has gotten extra support and and. Uh, you know, Efficiency Vermont is in with the Vermont Council on Rural Development um, mm -hmm. and Green Mountain Power and the whole Rochester yeah. area climate initiative and all that. So, um, and they really are, are where some of the money is actually coming from um, right. for efficiency improvements. So we definitely need them to do this walkthrough, even if we know much of what they're going to say about the building. Yeah. Yeah. All right. No good. That's on the twentieth. On the twentieth, nine thirty at the town clerk's office. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Um, let's jump um, back into the the rest of the previous schedule. Vic, you've been um, waiting very patiently, and I think Catherine's on the um, on Zoom here to. Um, you have um, information to share about a proposed grant application for the high school renovation? Yes. Um, so uh, we're here to ask for <clears throat> select board approval for the town to be the applicant for a $2.5 million grant application to Senator Sanders office. Um, and this would provide uh, capital improvements to the high school uh, building part of the overall repurposing project. And just by way of, of uh, background, so there's two main dilemmas <laughs> that have to be solved for this project to be feasible. You have to get enough paying tenants in the building to pay for the ongoing operation. And you have to get enough capital to do the uh, several million dollars worth of work that need to be done to make the building uh, intact and, and last a long time. It's sort of a chicken or egg. But in order to get tenants, you need to have capital committed or underway. In order to get the capital funds from grant sources, you got to have at least prospective uh, conditional tenants who are willing to say, yeah, I'm willing to come in as long as we get this building fixed up. We're working on both of those simultaneously. So tonight, we're going to talk a bit about the, the capital component. We'll talk about the other two, if you like. But on the capital side, uh, we've worked with our consulting architect have identified uh, what needs to be done to get people in the building, to get uh, all of the um, code requirements for life safety code fixed, and to provide a building envelope that is going to uh, really uh, reduce the uh, energy load in the building and get on a path towards a carbon-free uh, energy generation at, at that site. That's something that the architect has a special expertise in. Um, the cost of doing that is based primarily on the uh, Black River study is about $1.8 million in hard construction costs. Then there's about 25% on top of that for general conditions and soft costs. And then inflation has been just really bad. <laughs> and so they estimate 35% uh, from, from 2019 to now. So all of that adds up to $3.1 million to do this work. And I can, I can go into the specifics of what the work is if you want to talk about that. But anyway, so $3.1 million of work is what we think is going to take to get the building in condition to attract paying tenants to come into the building. Um, so uh, Catherine was contacted by Senator Sanders' office staff to say, we've heard about this project. We really like it. We think you should apply for this grant money. And so uh, we're working on the application. There is a deadline of April 22nd for the first phase of the application that needs to be in. But uh, the town would really be the, the applicant. It's not a 
uh, this community committee, um, the town would need to be the applicant. And of course, one of the other, other dilemmas is the town doesn't own the building. <laughs> so is there, would the town be allowed to be the applicant if it's... Um, we think know? so. Um, you know, this is evolving in real time. Yeah. And uh, we don't think it makes sense for the school board to be the applicant because they don't want the building. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the town seemed like the likely candidate because the town would be the likely next owner if the town decides to mm -hmm. go there. Um, so this is all conditional. So we would be seeking this grant, or the town would be seeking the grant on the condition that at a future date, the town decides to acquire the building. If the town decides not to acquire the building, then it's moved and there's no point. Right? So this um, providing that it's allowable to for the town to be the applicant before it owns the building, everything is kind of, it would, um, basically it would, well, I guess we'd see, we don't know exactly what the stipulations would be, but it would be, um, um, that would be information um, when the town comes to decide about what to do with this building, yeah. if that is, that if all of a sudden this building is coming with a, uh, 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 a pledge of funds. A pledge of funds to do yeah. it. So we'd be yeah. spending a dollar to get two and a half million dollars. Well, uh, <laughs> well, well, three point one. Yeah. Well, 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 you're no, applying two, for two point two and a half. Get the balance from yeah, that'd else. be. It. Yeah. And so you know, so we're going to be looking at additional grant uh, giving sources. So, for example, we want Vermont Community Development Implementation Grant, and we've had conversations with uh, Josh Hanford about you know what's appropriate for for that bucket of money and so you know, that would be one source we would look to and and if we could get even a you know a symbolic amount of funding from our ARPA funds that would show good faith in the teams that's why I mentioned that earlier mm -hmm. you know I don't you know, there's, I know there's a lot of needs uh, to be met with those funds but you know it might make an important statement even if it's just a symbolic amount so um so that's why I'm here and happy to take questions or any other additional information anybody wants? When we got the grant for the feasibility study, um, we obtained a letter from the uh, supervisory union uh, uh, giving their blessing for us to obtain those mm. that grant. Right. So I'm going to assume that you would be following the same avenue with this grant yeah, as, we'll, as we'll that, that the sure, supervisory the owner. that owns the building <coughs> would then have to get permission to yeah, give us yeah, their blessing. Yeah. I'm sure we would be able to get a letter of support. I believe that's what you need. Yeah, yeah. I mean, their, their goal is to unload the building. Um, right. Help you, yeah. And, and they're very, you know, we've talked about it in meetings more than once. They are really, really not just getting rid of the building, but are very much in support of the aims of the repurposing. Good, good. Yes, some healing could go on there. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, um, I guess the real question is, um, is that, would that work with the the grant to um, have it be a you know a tentative? This you know on on the town doesn't own the building. This is all speculative. It would be a speculative you know application, and then and, and then the town could still decide um, that they don't want to get into it, and then we would just you know not accept the grant. Is that this? Yeah, that, would, that would be the consequence. I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah it would be conditioned on the town. Okay. Yeah. We wouldn't invite Bernie to the parade anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Come to the parade, Bernie. I guess what I was getting at is that um, I don't think that we would want this to be perceived as a, um, the the town taking a step towards making the decision to go forward with this purchase without having brought it to the voters. But the whole reason... Right. We've been taking so long to make this decision and supported the <clears throat> the grant for the, the feasibility study was to gather as much information that we could to give the town. Right. right. And this is it would be an interesting piece of information to give the town mm -hmm. that there's, you know, um, it's not um, 
if we didn't explore the avenue, we would be cheating ourselves out of facts. And then we're not doing so, our job. Really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not in support of it so much, but I think we have to to uh, look at it. You know, I I don't support it, but I I think it, we have to look at it. No, we can't we can't go before the voters and ask them to make a decision without us right. doing our due diligence. Yeah, right. I agree with that. So. So I, I so we'll roll with you. So, so, okay, so, so what I'm asking for is a vote to yeah that's enable the town to apply for the grant. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I make that motion. I can second that. Yeah, all in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for all the work you've done on this. It's um, it's an interesting evolution. <laughs> it's know. a. <laughs> It's a head scratcher. It is a head scratcher. It's a, it's a, <laughs> to be honest with you. Yes. Yeah, but, um, I'm more concerned with the lasting ability of it than anything else and not being a burden to the taxpayer. That's my feeling on it. Yeah. Um, so now for something um, Fast completely trash. different. Um, we have the Able Waste Management is... Did they sell it or are they just renaming? They I think sold it. They sold it. And it's now going to be um, North Star Rubbish Removal. And so uh, I guess we're um, looking to um, move our contract from Able Waste over to North Star Removal. And as I understand, there's no change in the, in the cost to the town yet. So I move to continue on with North Star Rubbish Removal. Right, and that contract expires July 1. Yeah. Yeah. So, so just, this is from now until July 1. Um, that, as of May 1st. First. Yes. May 1st. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it would be good for Coming now months. until May 1st before a new contract um, comes at us. No, or? this, um, I think. That is the contract. Yeah. Um, this is... Um, as of May 1st, North Star will be taking it over. So we're still with Able Waste until May 1st. And then is this a year contract with, with um, so North Star? So it goes to April 30th, yeah. 2023? It'll be the, well, the name change, but the contract will be. Stay the same. Um, yeah, same. beginning same. 7 one until 6 23 Okay, so yeah. it is yeah. with our fiscal yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. So we're all set yeah. as far as what we did in the budget. Yeah. Right, right, right. So um, I move to approve that. I'll second that. All in favor? All right. Aye. Okay. I think this pen needs to go into the trash <laughs> when they show up next time. <laughs> Able waste. No, nope, North Star. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Couple weeks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we have um, the appointments. Um, so, <clears throat> so, um, who wants to be the road commissioner now? June Hendricks. <laughs> you want me to do it? I'll do it. I don't care. I'll, I'll get along. You, um, yeah, sure. Yeah. No, I don't. Oh, my father used to do it. Yeah. Probably I can yeah. do it too. Yeah. So is that official? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Frank. Yeah. Frank, you're busy. I know. Yeah. Too busy. That's all right. Um, <laughs> yeah. So um keeps me crazy. Um, <laughs> water commissioners it. were by default or um with them. You, did you did you miss the beginning? Beginning? Yeah. Well, the system well, clerk the, is the um, the first two are um, expire in twenty twenty three. Oh, the town yeah. report says twenty twenty two. Really? Yes. And this says twenty two. Assistant clerk Christian Bell. And the clerk was elected. Yeah, they're um right. So and she's she got points. a. And she assistant. Yep. Okay. And the administrative assistant is just a hired gun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you for that. Um, 
I guess we're still the, by default, the water commissioners and the sewer commissioners is the select board. Mm -hmm. um, I'll um, continue on as the on-site wastewater officer, but thanks to Terry carrying the, the load, but I'm here to back you up when you need something. <laughs> <laughs> right. Carrying and, uh, the pump, yeah, or pooper scooper. <laughs> um, yeah, well, we, you, we're both we're um both on that list here. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. So we got us for that, Frank. Um, we have contract for the county sheriff department. Um, I would um move to appoint um Dylan Dudley as a constable. <laughs> Yeah. Are we seconding that? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he's he seems to enjoy it. He's got his badge. Yeah, he, likes it. <laughs> yeah. he does like okay. it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And um, is Daniel still? He's not around, is he? He's in Boston. He's in Boston. So, so I don't so think, I think we should. We'll be looking for a, okay. a second constable yeah. because he's graduated. Yeah, and he's working. not around. Okay. <laughs> All right, on the um, planning board and board of adjustment, there's two, um, two spots opening up. There's David Curtis and um, Steve oh. Kochi is, um, he was appointed to fulfill, um, who left? Was it? Uh, Becky. Becky or? Becky, or, or is it John? No, I think it was Becky. Becky, Becky. Yeah. yeah. So I would move to, a, um, I think they both are still willing to be on it. I, yeah, they're not here to oppose it. No, so, so I'd uh, move to appoint <laughs> David Curtis and Stephen Kochi as the uh, planning board. Second that. Second. All in favor? Yep. Aye. All right. Okay. And they go to 26. And they go to 26. Mark who was the other person besides David? I'm sorry, Stephen who? Stephen Kochi, C-O-C-C-I. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Lewis. Lewis, but yeah, okay. And these are on. Um, You're going to do the, the um, zoning, zoning administrator? I'll continue to do the zoning administrator, sure. How does that, how long is that? Is that just a That's year? That's yearly, I think. Yeah. Nope. Do we have to vote it? Yeah, well, I'm not going to nominate myself. I, I nominate to as zoning administrator. <laughs> I'll second that. All in favor? All right. All right. Um, um, okay. Um, fire chief is elected by the fire department as of the first and second. And the um, fire warden. The fire warden is expiring in June. The state so will, will we get something for that, like sure? to be notified, or right, you'll get something and then okay, okay, I'm sure, right? Because it's this it. year that it, it expires. I'll ask yep. him that. Okay. Kristen, remind me. All yes, right. Sir. So here's the um, big question: Is um, emergency management director Vic? You see, he vacated. He knew it was coming. He's out of here. No. I did approach the lady in the back. Did, did yeah. you decide? Um, I did speak with Vic and getting an understanding of what that even means. <laughs> um, so, no, I haven't made a decision. Okay. We were going to meet up again. I'm thinking so. about it. Okay. So, yeah. we'll, thank we'll, you. We'll put that on hold. You know, um, thank you. Mm -hmm. That plan he had that Vic sent around for the emergency management. Mm -hmm. Good. Stockbridge Fire Chief is not Ryan anymore. It's Dave Brown back in there. Oh, I didn't that know that. I, I sent him a couple of changes. What's that? Where does that go? Maybe that's why I got an email. If you read down it, I forgot what page it was on. That was that one that you and I were trying to print and we couldn't, we could view it on his phone, but we don't have the permission to print it and oh. to look at it. It's a big long one. It's a yearly thing that right. we go through. Updated and improved every year. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So who do you send updates to? Uh, that's something Vic, Vic takes care of that. Is it two rivers? I don't no, 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 is that that's a state? That, that's a state. Oh, okay. yeah, it was something to state yeah, of the state. Yeah. All right. 
No, we know where Vic lives, even though he left. Yeah, and he's willing to uh, uh, he's willing to help. Um, he's willing to help us until doing so, Hendrix as alternate emergency management. Okay. Second. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So is that a 23 too? I think that's a yeah. And then the regional emergency management coordinator. Oh. What is that? That's is that a new one? That's that, the newest one. That's the newest one. So Terry, you said you you were the, the second of the regional management for, but um who was Vic who, was Vic was Vic was. I mean, it's really the head one would be probably the had the regional representative. Yeah. The, yeah. the, the director. director would be the regional as well. Yeah. 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 Okay. You got that, McKenna. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, then I would, um, are, well, are you still willing to be the second there, Terry? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Well, I'll nominate <laughs> Terry. So we, all in favor? All right. All right. Okay. <clears throat> But I think Vic is willing to stay on as yes. a White River Valley Ambulance representative. Yes. So and I'd I, nominate him for that. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And the alternate for the um, Werva is um, Jim Bowen. And I'd nominate him for that. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And um, Tree Warden. Which is kind of a symbolic um, position now, but we still have it. There's Norm Norm Smith that's been doing it's that. It's actually not symbolic anymore. No, no it isn't. No. There are some very specific yeah. regulations that go along with it. Yeah, any tree we have to remove from the park needs his approval. Needs his approval. Yeah. So right. we'll have to see him for the dead. You might want to talk to him before your point. I yeah, yeah. I think we might want to talk yeah, to him. Yeah. Be willing to bet he's probably not going to take it. Yeah. So we'll hold off on that one. Um, Two Rivers um, Transportation Planning Representative Annie McKay is respectfully declined to do that. She doesn't want to do that anymore. So, um, Transportation Planning Representative. Two Rivers Transportation Planning Representative. You'd be good at that. Pat. I could do it. Yeah. <laughs> talk nominate, to Annie about it. <laughs> I'll nominate, um, I'll nominate Pat. I'll definitely second that. <laughs> okay. All in favor? <laughs> Sorry, Pat. <laughs> hey, you're doing everything else, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and the, we should, um, probably. the Transportation Advisory Committee. I nominate June Hendricks. Okay, I'm still not sure what I ever did on that. But. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All right. Yeah, that's done. All right. Um, energy representative, I nominate Jeff Gephardt. He's doing a great job. Yep, I'd second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. All right. And his um, alternate. Is you, Frank? Yep. You would do that. I'd nominate yeah. you to do that again. I second it. All in favor? All right. All right. Okay. I don't know if I can vote for myself. No. And, then, um, and then the energy coordinator um, was Jeff Gephardt. You know, would, I second that. All in favor? All right. right. He's not getting out of that one. No. Either. And then the Tri Town Energy Committee, um, as it comes and goes, I'd nominate Jeff Gephardt. I second that. In favor. Oh, he's unmuting. Kid. Oh, he's oh. unmuting. Oh, <laughs> pull the plug. oh shoot! <laughs> Cut him <laughs> off. Quick, there mute him. Done. Is there is there still a Tri Town Energy Committee, Jeff? There really isn't. Um, I have really never isn't. been able uh, after the first meeting uh, over a year ago. I have not been able to get a uh, collaborator from Pittsfield or uh, Hancock. Yeah. All right. So we're going to eliminate that position. There. Okay. All right. There is another uh, person that has approached me the other day. Uh, Janice McCann mm -hmm. is looking to coordinate volunteers in the community to assist elders in home uh, mm -hmm. chores mm -hmm. like 
you know, if they need wood stacked or lawn raked or something like that. So she would like some sort of uh, title where she could get volunteers to do that, to make up a group of volunteers that would go around and, and uh, help elders in the community. Well, since we're going to be appointing three other positions, why don't we put that on our next agenda when we do more appointments? And that okay. way we can, we can create the title, put right. a definition to it. Right. She, she's willing to come in and talk about it. Okay. Um, she had a conversation. We can get in touch with her and she can come to our next meeting to do that. But that's what she'd like to do uh, just to help people, okay. elders with home chores kind of thing. No, no transportation or anything, yeah, just, okay. just home yeah, chores. Yep. Yep. Can I can I say something about that? Um, sure. Because I, Go ahead. With, because I work with the Central Vermont Council on Aging, we we have a very well established uh, department for volunteers, which does the background checks. And if you're going to be getting volunteers to do home chores, you do have to consider about background checks. And I'm just suggesting that Jan might work with the head of of our department since this territory, the five down territory is, is served by council on aging that that may be a partnership that would benefit what Jan well, wants to do. Would you be willing to talk to her, Catherine? Of course. That would be good if you could explain that to her and maybe she would take it on herself to look at it further and could give us more information on it. In the of future. course, I'll, I'll talk to Jan. All right, thank you. All right. Um, so Marvin Harvey's been the um, on the Bethel Royalton Solid Waste Advisory Committee um, for a while. I'm thinking that maybe um, he's starting to spend less and less time around here. I'm thinking maybe we we fill that with um with someone else. I see that um, Jim Bowen's the recycling coordinator, which is kind of close to that. Right, and right now the Bethel World and Solid Waste is Not needs so some solid. advice. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I I can second James Jim Bowman for that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's him texting us now saying no. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Jim, if you're out there. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then for the recycling coordinator, um, I would nominate Jim Bowen again. I'll that. second that. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And the park committee, um, Martha, are you still willing? Um, I have been the only person on the park committee for years, and um, it would be really nice to have some company. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Other basically, um, basically, it, you know, there. I just remind people that they're supposed to ask permission to have an event on the park from you and that kind of stuff. And I, um, I used to be in charge of decorating the bandstand at Christmas and that kind of stuff. And now I physically can't do that anymore. But I was able to get some people. To, volunteers were were kind enough to volunteer to do that this year. So hopefully that'll continue. I mean, I'm, I can stay on it but I can't physically do some of the work. That's right. Well, I would like to have you stay on and just to, just to you know, you can kind of look out the window and, and have yeah. a little- Well, yeah, I do have a bird's eye view of the park, so yeah. You do, you do. So you can keep us appraised a of what's going on. So I'd, I'd nominate Martha Slater for the park committee. I uh, second that. All in favor? All right. All right. Thank you, Martha. Okay. Um, so we've got the recreation committee. Um, hey, Norm is still here. You're still into it. And I think Dean's still into it because he was here. Yeah. And um, Martha, you were on there. And yep. um, Carrie McDonald, Joe Shankman, and um, Walt Prukshma is with this focus on tennis. Do we still want Walt to run tennis? Yeah. Um, um, yeah, if anything, but, uh... Yeah, Evelyn's been very active with that too. Um, Leave his name on it. Leave his name on it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'd I'd move to a point. Um, all those aforementioned. I second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. 
Okay. And then we our animal control officer has been Jeff Brown, and he seems to. I nominate Jeff Brown. Yeah, I second the motion. All, All in favor. favor. All right. Okay. Thank Maxis. you, Jeff. Um, and Tri Valley um, Transit, we had Tim Crowley. Um, I nominate, I nominate Tim, Tim Crowley. Crowley. Yeah, I'll second the motion. All, All in favor? favor? Yeah. All right. All right. Okay, thank you, Tim. Um, I have been seeing that Tri County Transit around, but they're, they're present and they're doing their job. Uh, Budget and Finance Committee. Um, currently, oh, we, we get, get the E nine one one. Um, that's on my list. That's farther down. Okay. Oh, oh. Okay. We'll come back to it. You guys are going from the book. I got yeah, it. We, we okay. go by the book. All right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, so, um, so we got um, in the Budget and Finance Committee. We had Lois Bond and Robert. I'm still willing to Robert to be on there. Yep. And Nancy, we need you on there if you're willing. Yep. And Barb DeHart, I think you're still into it, right? And Greg White and the select board members by default. I'd move to um, approve or appoint all those. I second. Folks. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Thank you. We voted for ourselves there. Yeah, we? we did. Okay. Yeah. I guess we have to. We'll vote for you. <laughs> we kind of have to. <laughs> um, Norm Christensen has been our um, our elf of the website administration and are you willing to continue on with that thank you thank you thank you thank you i'd move to a point norm i second on favor all right okay and um our ec fiber representative has been john white and i'd like to believe you continue to do that so i'll move to appoint him i second all in favor all right are they changing their name? They are changing their name. Well, are they? Are they changing? It's, it's going to look confusing. I'm not sure if they're changing their name or if they're just. Anyway, John will tell us. <laughs> yeah. Our bills. Will okay. Tell us. Now E nine one one maintenance. Angus, are you willing to continue on with that? Thank you. I move to appoint Angus McCusker. I second. All in favor. Aye. All right. And Green Update Coordinator has been Nick Pacuto, and since he just um, we signed the application for Green Update, I presume he's still willing to do that. So I appoint, move to appoint Nick. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then we've got um, official newspaper. Oh yeah, our official newspaper. Martha, are you, you, is the Herald still willing? Uh, for sure. For sure. Okay, I move to um, appoint the Herald of Randolph as the official. Your newspaper. park committee would like to remain employed, etc. Thank okay. you. All right. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, We've just got a couple of vacancies, right? Yeah. Yeah. A couple of us, we can revisit those. Vacancy and Norm Smith. And Norm Smith. Yeah, Norm Smith. Um, <laughs> Um, does anybody else got anything they want to speak about? Robert? You're the new pro commissioner? No, no, I no, Frank is. Okay. Um, at some point uh, in the last couple of years, the power company came through up on Wheatfield Drive and replaced the power poles. Um, there is a dead end uh, sign at the end of Park Pro, and they put the new power pole right in front of it. So it would be nice if sometime the town crew could move that sign in front of the power pole so people could actually see could it. Actually it could see actually it. see it because we get people driving up there trying to find a shortcut. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll speak to John about it. But all you see yeah. Is, yeah. Um, what was yeah, the name but, of the street? Uh, what was the name of the street? Park Row? Park Row. Okay, thank you. Um, another, um, so he put up, um, he put the railroad ties along Route 100 by the, the new park down there to keep people from driving in there and tearing it up is good. Um, and 
but the parking along the north side of the fire station, he put up signs saying fire station parking only, but I think those were dedicated for parking spaces. Yes, you not you cannot have a parking space within 75 feet of firehouse. State law. Really? They didn't know that when we did the park. It was there. But they didn't realize it. So you cannot. And so does that car, mean in the cars parked there are pain in the butt because yeah. they stick out there for the tanker. Yeah, I can see that. Plus it's the only spots we got to park. So we'd stick them in the the um park and ride. Park and ride and yep. um in a round back. Yep. Does that that count um, us? It's just got to be 75 feet away be from 75 the, feet the away doors. From, firehouse. from the doors or the firehouse? Firehouse. So that means you can't park out back either. Then. No, it shouldn't. Yeah. But yeah. the plows are all out there anyway. Yeah. Um, hey, can I ask a question of Terry? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, Terry, you've got that pancake breakfast coming up this uh, on Easter Sunday. Um, I was playing... Is there it, is it possible for someone like me who needs to use a walker to, to park near the firehouse to go in there, or where would I have to park? Charlie Martin would be right out there to help you. You pull up in front of the firehouse, and Charlie will help you yeah. out. He's wearing the door-to-door door service, Martha. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. I, I'm not I'm not trying to get special treatment. I just wanted to. Oh see no, it's everybody. Yeah. Everybody gets special treatment. Okay, so, uh, good. Thank you very much. Charlie wearing the bunny suit. No. <laughs> I thought Terry was wearing the bunny suit. <laughs> so um, I don't know if we'll get any pushback from the state for the money we got for the the new park because of that. The, that they um, should have known that. They should have known that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now we have the parking right across it's the street. The state statue right there. Yes. Yeah. I brought it in. Yeah. Cannot I, have a parking area within 75 feet of firehouse. I did meet with the uh, Green Mount Power on the parking ride. Mm -hmm. They really are excited about the EV charges going yeah, there. Yeah. So we looked at it. I'm not sure how much space they'll have to take up, but it's a good it's a good site that yeah. I think will So work that's where they're gonna put their pole. They put a stake in. Did yeah. you see that? Is that where they're coming off from? Well, what they're going to do is they're going to put a mid-span pole in there so they can put the bank of transformers on there. And then if they do the resiliency zone, they'll be able to use that pole that they're putting in as the switch point and move the, the bank of transformers to where the step downs are closer to Charlie. But they, would, house. they wouldn't be coming off. That pole will underground from there. No, they're what they're going to do is they're going to run an overhead secondary system to the pole where the step downs are, which yep. is the next one south there, one. and then they're going to go underground from to there, there. Yep. so that when if the resiliency zone happens, they can take that three phase bank of step downs out and put the three phase bank of transformers on that pole, and they can put their switch gear on the mid-span pole so they can disconnect from the line coming out of the sub yeah. so then the village will be on its own so that's or at least that's how i understand it at this point because coming off from there they'd have to cross one inch and they're, line, which i'd rather not have them build and they're looking at the servicing the firehouse uh in the town garage and your red building mm -hmm. And the the house, your neighbor's house, there, Bud's house, um, from Rochester Main Street, and taking that transformer that's on the sub line coming up because they'd like to have the firehouse and the town garage in the resiliency zone, but it'll still leave your septic um, out of that zone. Yeah, like I said, it, we don't really need it. Right, I. I our talked septic pumps or even the well pump on resiliency right. zone yeah. because the reservoir would take care of itself for at least four days. Mm -hmm. I, I I let them know that uh, Green Mount Power Sarah there, the lady that's yeah. doing a lot of the work. So I did have conversation with her about that, and I sent her an email with what you told me. Right, because we got so, a generator that can run all the septic, right? And once a day, it'd be 
you can get by. So we're trying to set it up so that it's a it's a win win for them and a win win for us. And it's a way to do it that'll work because they're going to need the, that extra space, you know, coming off. They right. can't just put it on the street pole that, out there because of all the the connections that they have there and all the trans. They, they got transpositions on that pole. So right. the phasing works right going north. <laughs> no, and that pole will be fine south. there. That's okay. not my main So, lines. yeah, we weren't sure. And I, I told them I didn't think so because the hydrant's on the other side of the road and the other one's on the. It crosses right there at about 45, just about where that driveway starts. It's just below that. Yeah, okay. It heads across and then it right. cuts actually it diagonals the P vine. Or I mean, goes where P vine comes in the road, it diagonals all the way across Route 100 there. Yeah, that's what I thought. 45 is on the other side again. I, I, want, I didn't want him to dig up the parking lot at all. I, I said, you know, don't do that. If you go to this pole with your underground, you you'll make it. It's a clean shot to where they yeah. need to put the chargers, and you know it'll be space enough for them to park there, and that'll be, oh, it'll be a good thing. And we when we look at the sidewalks, I want to make sure that there's a it's a wide area down through there anyway mm -hmm. on that side of the road. It's undefined. Yes, yeah. it's undefined, but yeah. you know I want to keep that as that area. I'm trying to look at it that way. So uh, I think it'll work good. The only thing, maybe the neighbor will have an issue. I don't know. I haven't addressed that with him yet. Well, like I said, the, when we looked into that for a firehouse at one time, that house only owns like six feet off the front corner to the north. And I think it's 10 or 11 off the back corner and it's a straight line back. So basically, they really don't own even that lower driveway. The half, about Is half that of their driveway. Within your seventy-five feet. No, no, we're yeah. not. We're talking about. Well, I'm talking, okay. to, yeah, I'm talking about Bud. To talk to you Is about Bud parking was... within your seventy-five feet. Venturini. Who? Bud. Bud in the house. Andrea. Oh, oh, the house next door. Yeah, yeah, they park no, down the road. Okay. Um, you can get 75 feet over to where they find fire. out yeah. if those uh, chargers need a zoning so permit. <laughs> well, we park in there, right? I wouldn't yeah. think, they they would. I would think they would. It's a permanent structure. Yeah. So yeah. we'd have to be, what, 10 feet there? Isn't that the. Theoretically, yeah. Okay. I think, yeah. well, I think we yeah. have it. I yeah. just. Yeah. I just was right. wondering. I wasn't sure. Um, <laughs> Can I ask a question? Yep. Yep. About the paving, are you? I didn't hear it mentioned, but it was a part of the that plan that we got a few years ago. The uh, uh, sidewalk that goes up from the minister's uh, place up around the Bethel Mountain Road to Brook Street is that is that going to be incorporated into the sidewalk renewal? We don't know yet. We no. really, it's um, the the focus was trying to deal with things that were going to be connected with the new paving of Route 100, so that was more seamless there. But um, might be a phase two. Might be a phase two. Yeah, that right by the parsonage needs some attention. We'd, we'd have to probably step into the parsonage lawn a little more. I think there in order to make that sidewalk stick with uh, the stormwater runoff and everything. Like yeah, that. there's a lot of other issues there that we have to address. Right, and and that particular part of the sidewalk I think is asphalt, and it's it's not sustaining year after year. So that sidewalk is uh, concrete down up into the parsonage, and then it goes asphalt. But there's a big part of it. Uh, in front of the former Brousseau house and the brick schoolhouse that's really crumbling. The one that Terry put in in front of our house is held up really beautifully. So I just wondered, because it was part of that plan that that we got studied, the study a few years ago, because it's part of the village center. And it's definitely a sidewalk that's um, used extensively by the folks who live up um, on 
you know, Brook Street. So I just have to yeah. put that in there. Yeah. Did some of that concrete get plowed out and end up over on the, the little park by the culvert? I think some of the blacktop might have been. No, it looks like concrete. It does. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't. It, it, it's I over thought, there wasn't now. there a little concrete it's pad coming in on the, on the catch basin there? That's how that doesn't go across the road. Right. And isn't that isn't there a header on the side of that that might have got plowed in? Could be. I don't know. I haven't looked at it, Nancy. It's all just sitting there. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'll look at it and see. I, the park well, the is... The other place that there's a problem with the sidewalk is the culvert that is next to the lawn on Huntington House. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's several pieces <laughs> of marble and a few other kinds of yeah. things that are all upset. Yeah. Plenty of stuff to do. Oh, Spring yeah. Cleaner. More than enough. Plenty it's the stuff. road commissioner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he didn't right. say sidewalk commissioner. So yeah. I don't have any All right. Things. Well, um, <laughs> no one else has anything else to say. I'm, I'm sure you do. <laughs> I second that. Well, in favor? Bye. Right. Okay. Thank you all. Thanks Bye, a lot. Yeah. That's a lot.